Good morning, MP Day. Stephen MP Day. The nation celebrates and mourns the life of a gallant son. Yes, uh, the, the nation still has to have another speaker. The race is on, and one of the aspirants is a Professor Honorable uh, Elijah Dickens. Mushemeza. He is the MP for Shema County South and he is an independent MP in this uh, 11th parliament. Good morning to you, Honorary Bond. Thank you for welcoming me in your house. Yes, morning, uh, dear viewers. And uh, I'm happy to be on NTV. As you have heard, my name is Elijah Dickens Mushemeza, member of parliament, Shema County South, on independent ticket. Mm. Honorary Bond, uh, it is uh, just really important for me to give you an opportunity, a minute, uh, to pay tribute to the grandson of Uganda. Indeed, uh, Uganda has lost a grandson. I knew the late Right Honorable Jacob Olanya right from Makerere days, mm. when he was our student, a student leader, and subsequently as a deputy speaker and a speaker. He really was a man of integrity, a man of respect, who believed in transparency and had a national vision. We have lost a great man, and I pay tribute to him. My condolences to the family, to the people of Amoro constituency, to the National Resistance Movement, the National Parliament, the entire Uganda and the entire world where he was participating to make a contribution. Describe, describing him by those kind words, do you feel that, yes, you're fit for, to fit, feel into those shoes? Yes, because uh, we mentored him. We mentored him at Makerere, even when he was a uh, chairperson of, of uh, a committee in the parliament that was handling constitutional reforms. He invited me to make a presentation. This was the time of the Visanja. Mm -hmm. I made a, a presentation in the committee where he was chairing because he had trust in me. And even when he was going to run for the deputy speaker, he even informed me, and I encouraged him. And during his time as a speaker, I used to call on him in his office. So a person we mentored, and I was part of that mentorship, and I saw him upholding the values of justice, I think I'm the right person to replace him. As you aspire for that position, SEC has already made a decision. Yes, of course, you know it, it has the, holds the majority in the House. This should have, have come as a blow to your efforts. I, I don't think so. You know, yesterday I made a successful uh, uh, disclosure, mm. what you call expression of interest, because uh, under the rules of Parliament, there was no such a provision unlike in the political parties. Mm. And that's why I made a public announcement that I'm an aspiring candidate. And today, I'm going to be engaged more in consultations, including members of the National Resistance Movement, because I'm, the, I'm an independent NRM leaning. Those are my colleagues. They know ideologically we are together. I'm an independent by default because of what happened in NRM primaries. But ideologically, we share the same principles. So today I will engage in more consultations with members of NRM in Parliament, with the independents, with members of the opposition. There are so many dynamics, many things we can afford today. You so know, it is too hard to say it is a, a bro. Some of the people, some of your colleagues that you're going to rally and consult are now walking towards Kololo, and they will be engaged in this uh, and this uh, NRM caucus, and they are most likely to endorse. Honorable, right Honorable, and it among. I'm also invited. I'm also invited in Kororo. So consultations are going to go on. Because this is not a, a war. It is a, a healthy competition. We are colleagues. And the co consultations will continue. By tomorrow when we go to parliament, you, you never know. Consensus could be let us support an independent candidate. Politics is very dynamic. I've taught politics. I've engaged in politics. I know things can change any time. I'm a believer in God. What have, uh, the let, let me say this. Mm. I'm a believer in God, and with God, God can change a fire in a second. God can change a fire in a second, and his will will be done. So, so anything can happen between now and evening. Have you uh, spoken to the independent MPs, and what's their voice? You know, you, you, you talk to them individually, mm. and they're in support, because we're not holding any public uh, campaigns. Uh, the rules do not allow that. We'll do the campaigns tomorrow, 
but I engage them on one to one. You know, some of those people I spoke to that I, I was going to have an engagement with you this morning, they told me, ah, Honorable Mushemeza, I think he's just looking for more attention, more, uh, he's trying to get attention from the big man, the fountain of honor, so, so that maybe you can give him some more appointments. What type of uh, attention? A professor always has attention. Wherever he or she is, whenever a professor speaks, there is an attention. I've worked with NLM leadership since 1980, when I was a UPM activist. Mm. I was a member of SEC when I was the acting chairman of NRM Electoral Commission. I sat in SEC. So they are, they are colleagues, members of SEC are colleagues. So what type of attention are you talking about? You know, I remember in 2010, you were really, as the vice chairman of NRM Electoral Commission, you were against those who would stand as independents, those who could go into court uh, to set differences within uh, the party. But now you see, you went and contested as an independent, and you won. And see where we are, that things were condemning. You see, the job I was doing, mm. when people came up to run as independent, I engaged them as the chairman. I handled over 600 petitions and made sure I made a fair judgment. And after a fair judgment, I would engage them. But like me, when I put in my petition, it was mishandled. Nobody even engaged me. So the, 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 the methods of work became different. So I was really pushed on the wall. And the results exonerated me that indeed I was cheated. But let's not go there. Let's concentrate on what we are doing right now. You know that what we are doing right now is the dynamics at play. Uh, we've seen voices from cultural leaders. We've seen voices from religious leaders, uh, that bishops. We've seen some members of parliament from APG. They are actually parliamentary groups same, saying they don't even be walking to Kololo if their choice is not had, if their choice is not made of having one, I'm talking about regional politics, ring fencing some positions. This is not the kind of politics that you would want to be part of. You see, those are normal dynamics in politics. People coming along regional lines, it is not a new thing. Right from independence, even before independence and during the post-independence, people would come up like from Lango as a caucus, from Bukedi, from Busoga, from Ankore. Uh, you know, those dynamics of independence, th there's nothing new. If I was a member of SEC, like I used to be, and people come up organized as Northern region, mm. and they have sat in a meeting, they have come up with a demand, you engage them. You, you don't just dismiss them. You, you, you engage them, you show them that the current dynamics may not be favorable with your demand. But you don't ignore them, you don't dismiss them. Through engagement, they may come to understand that the current dynamics, like uh, I wouldn't be surprised if SEC engaged me. I would also engage them. This is normal in politics. Politics is about interests. If the engagement says, uh, come, uh, results from the engagement say of the consultation that we're going to be making today, if, the, uh, if many say that, you know what, let's leave it to advice on Iba Anita Mong, and you come as sort of for that deputy speaker, would you accept that? Or do you stand you know, down? We should it go into speculation. But definitely, I'm not going for deputy speaker. I'm for the speaker. An engagement is about speaker. I'm not interested as an aspiring candidate on the position of the deputy speaker. My interest is on the speaker. And that's where we can engage. But a good leader has to listen to the voices of those he wants to lead. I'm not saying mm. I will not listen to the voices, mm. but I don't want to come to a conclusion even before mm. an engagement has been done. You know, the parliament you want to lead, Steer, this August House, has, uh, we've seen a lot of acrimony within the House, especially uh, from the recent times when we've seen this case of uh, Honorable Francis Zakebutebi, the one of Michana Municipality. Uh, this has left a bitter test within some members of parliament, especially those from the opposition that we want to quote, this is not a parliament, the feeling right now in parliament is not the one that you would want uh, to have as a, a strong parliament. I think you are raising a very fundamental question. What type of parliament would like to see? What type of parliament I would like to lead? I would like to see a parliament that is calm, that there is justice, even in allowing people to debate, because there are various shades of opinion. You have the independents, some are NRM leaning, like me. You have the ruling party. You have the opposition, also with different political parties, UPC, DP, FDC, PP, NUP, which is leading the opposition. Even when you are selecting people to debate on any subject, there should be a balance. 
Right now, a number of MPs are complaining. Mm. They stand up, but they never catch the speaker's eye. That is a very, very serious matter. And even, how do you prioritize government programs? Sometimes we take a lot of time on some procedural uh, issues, uh, on some questions, which are also important. And in the process, we lose time. I don't want to say we waste time, but we lose time. We need to move faster and deal with substantive matters, whether government uh, business or private members' business. So we could achieve more if we scale up on the speed. Okay, your last word to the members of parliament that you are going to be quoting today and tomorrow. Uh, my appeal to members of parliament, when I make a phone call or when I approach you, give me time because I want to engage you. Uh, this is the day of consultations, and the consultations I will make today will determine the nominations of tomorrow and the campaigns. And thank you for listening and watching me, dear viewers, nationally. Thank you so much, Honorable Professor Elijah Dickens Moshemeza. He is the MP of uh, Shema County South. He's an independent MP, but is now vying for that position that fell vacant after the death of Right Honorable Jacobo Lokoli Olanya. He's, we shall be knowing who is the Speaker of the 11th House tomorrow. Stephen in Bidon Fefe Switch, Buga, handing you back to Romeo Wusiko in the studios. Thank you so much, Stephen Imbid Day, for that segment. Right now, we are going to Mr. Ivan Walunyolo. He's talking to Dr. Anne Abaho about the same issue. A very good morning, Ivan Walunyolo. What's the latest where you are? You're live. Ivan, you're live on Morning at NTV. How is Dr. Anne Abaho doing this beautiful Thursday morning? 